but it follows a similar pattern to what we've been talking about. Look, the first part of the premise, Dunnigan, is that the Federal Reserve is not getting tough on inflation, no matter what they continue to tell us. The drumbeat is getting louder and louder and louder about the global pivot away from the U.S. dollar. There were uh, two big stories that just came out, one over the weekend, and we've interviewed with both Alistair McLeod and Rick Rule about that, and I'd like to get your take on that since you're the one who, who forwarded it to me in the first place, was Saudi Arabia in talks to join the BRICS nation and what that signifies as far as a strategic pivot that you've been warning us about uh, of uh, Saudi kind of repositioning itself. And then now also this newest story, uh, we'll put a link in the, in the description of this video about India wanting to save its foreign reserves by allowing trade settlement in rupees. And uh, that echoes kind of what uh, I mean. What Putin did, saying trade has to happen in in uh, rubles, just about six months ago, and so on. So, uh, talk to us about that that increasing drumbeat of pivoting away from the U.S. dollar globally, and what it means, what the what the knock on effects of that are likely to be that the U.S. Uh, people need to be aware of. It's a huge deal. Heck, even we we even saw recently the German foreign minister has called for a new EU-based payment system independent of the U.S. SWIFT that would not involve dollar payments, but it follows a similar pattern to what we've been talking about. Look, the first part of the premise, done again, is that the Federal Reserve is not getting tough on inflation, no matter what they continue to tell us. And, you know, we talked last week about how the National Economic Bureau or the National Bureau of Economic Research came out and said that by calculating the 13.6% inflation in 1980, Using today's numbers, it would be 9.1%. So the exact same 9% tick that we have, if calculated the way they used to be, would be at 13%. And as we talked about, Volcker raised rates to, to the federal funds rate to 19 and three quarters percent to shut down inflation. That's getting tough on inflation. If we realize that we're almost in the exact same zone for inflation, the Fed raising the federal funds rate to one and a half percent is not getting tough on inflation. And even if they raise it by another 75 or 100 basis points, which will really stick a needle right in the eye of the market, that's still not getting tough on inflation. Because even at that point, if we moved it up to two and a half or even three percent on the federal funds rate, you're still a negative six plus percent real terms uh, in terms of uh, a return. And so getting tough on inflation is not raising rates incrementally, little by little by little, while, I mean, I would argue it's even accommodative, not not tough, it's accommodative when you have uh, a negative real return. And so that incentivizes here again, more speculation until you raise the rates above inflation. Anyways, to see Saudi Arabia come out. And I believe, and I've been saying for quite some time, you know, every call I get on with customers and we get into a discussion and they want to know my take on things, the first question I ask is, what makes the dollar the world reserve currency? Do you know? Most people don't. And my answer is always, it's the protection of the Saudi kingdom as per our arrangement with Saudi Arabia since 1974, that we protect them. They denominate oil globally in dollars through OPEC. And it's that 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 fragile relationship that we have with OPEC and with Saudi Arabia that gives the dollar its hegemony, its world reserve status. And when you realize that you're talking about this coalescence of the BRICS nations, which are all moving away from the dollar, courtesy, I believe, of the weaponizing of the dollar and pushing Russia out of SWIFT into the open arms of China and the BRICS nations, that has, has spurred this move on. And when you witness Biden, who hasn't even been to the Texas-Mexico border, now running to Saudi Arabia, you can see the severity of the issue that we are in. If indeed Saudi Arabia joins the BRICS nations, it falls right into part and parcel with what I have been afraid of and talking about on every show that I've done since September of last year, 2021, when Saudi Arabia announced a joint military cooperation agreement with Russia, part of the BRICS nations. If, if Saudi Arabia and other OPEC nations join the BRICS community, which it looks like they are, and here again, you got other countries that produce oil like Venezuela and Iran who just signed on with the BRICS nations. If we see this continuing growing and coalescence of the BRICS nations away from the dollar, if Saudi Arabia does it and comes out and says, listen, 
Uh, it's been a nice run, but we're going to take Rupee. We're going to take the, the new digital yuan. We're going to take uh, uh, ruble. We're going to take uh, all these other currencies and gold like that. It's over as all of these countries that have had to own dollars start to dump them in favor of their local currencies or others that they would rather hold. When those dollars come flooding home, it creates a religious experience as the dollar collapses and interest rates spike. That's always been a big fear of mine. Now, I didn't see Russia, or excuse me, uh, Saudi Arabia joining in with the BRICS nations, but that story in and of itself is extraordinary. Uh, and it simply, I think, exacerbates and, and underscores my biggest concern, and that is a move away from the dollar as the petrol reserve standard. It is the petrol uh, standard, the petrol reserve standard that gives the dollar its its world reserve status. And and if every country on the planet has had own dollars since 1974, if all of a sudden that stops in order to buy oil, the ramifications are extraordinary here at home. And instead of the Fed getting tough on inflation, the market does it for them as dollars come flooding home. The byproduct of that inflation is rising rates. The Fed doesn't have to be blamed, just, just like our our foolhardy administration tries to blame Putin for inflation. That's not the case. Always inflation is a monetary event. It is an increase in the money supply. Yes, the, the supply chain distortions only make it more painful, but it's the increase in the money supply that creates the inflation. The Fed and the U.S. government does not want to take responsibility. They'd rather have a villain. Well, there is your villain right there. It's OPEC joining the BRICS and now opening up oil to other currencies and other settlement systems like gold that will really be a big issue. Now, about a week ago or two weeks ago, we talked about a deal that was struck between Russia and India, where India would would buy um, armaments from Russia and pay them in rupee. That was a big enough deal. We saw a new, uh, a new uh, channel, if you will, or a trade route that goes basically from Iran to, to India, passing Russia uh, so they don't have to go around the Suez Canal. You're seeing all of these arrangements, these these trade arrangements and these these uh, settlement arrangements that are sidestepping the dollar and the dollar hegemony. So to see OPEC come out and say that is a huge deal. And today, or actually yesterday, it was announced that India is now going to uh, start taking rupee for their oil and for their natural resources. And, and maybe they're only trading with the other BRICS nations or with Russia for right now. But the similar theme you're beginning to see everywhere. And that is a move away from the dollar. Now, what that really means is there's less demand for the dollar and less demand for the dollar is inflationary as those dollars come home and interest rates start to rise. It's a very big deal done again. And, and it's the biggest deal of all. If we lose that, that dollar hegemony, if the rest of the world which represents you know, 70, 80, 90% of human population starts to seek other alternatives to settlement in energy and in trade and isolates the dollar further and further and further from these new arrangements like the Belt Road Initiative, which we're not part of, it, it spells impending doom for, for this economy. And I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but I don't see anywhere, any way other that, than, than a, a period of great pain as interest rates rise and markets try to find equilibrium in that environment that we're gonna have to go through if indeed this happens. And it looks more and more and more like, like it is gonna happen.